So in the last video, we took these four vectors and we added them up. In order to do that, we assigned bearings to them, and we came up with our vector equation. Of course, this vector 5 is not really in the north direction, we just pretended it. Now, we did this so that we can put them all together and get an answer. Hopefully, if you've tried it, you know that the answer is about 2.2, and in this system, it'll come out as east 20 degrees south. But that's not really the answer. We can't actually leave it at that because this is not north. Who knows what it is? Maybe this is an overhead view. This could be west, it could be up, it could be down. And it has to be, uh, has to be accurate. So we've got to get rid of these bearings. Another reason we do this is because someone else might have chosen this to be north. And their answer would then be different. And all our answers should be the same. So 2.2 east 20 south. If I put that on my bearing diagram here, it's going to be around here where this angle is 20 degrees. So to get rid of the bearings, I want to relate it to one of the other vectors that was given. Okay, the north was not given in the problem, it was just the relative angles between the vectors was all that was given. So, a way to say this would be 2.2. If this angle is 20 degrees, then this angle from the 5 newton vector from the 5 vector is 110 degrees. So I could say it's 110 degrees, that's clockwise. Okay? And I'll say it's clockwise from the 5 unit vector. Of course there's other possibilities. I could measure this angle instead. If this angle is 20, this angle is only 10. So another equivalent expression would be 2.2, 10 degrees, counterclockwise from the 7 unit vector. And now this way there's no ambiguity. It doesn't matter if this is actually north or not. We've got our proper answer. There's obviously more than one possibility, but they are equivalent. They mean the same thing, so that's good enough.